friends, I have a lot to show you today. If you haven't been to Turbo World, we build and fix things to last longer and go faster. Welcome! I removed and replaced the front blown strut and sway bar end link to help in our launch. Then I pulled out the engine hoist, undid some motor mounts, intercooler pipes, and undid some radiator hoses, then raised the engine up to remove and replace the oil pan gasket. Now here's where things get interesting. Alright, what are we looking at here? All that was found in the pickup screen of my oil pump. So you may be wondering why the engine hoist is out after we went and did the dyno with the Supra. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out now. It'll be in the description down below. This is my oil pan pickup. This is all the cool stuff I found in the pickup tube. This is, of course, a finger off the glove that I lost down in the pickup tube for the dipstick. On the day of going to the dyno that I couldn't pull out, so my own mistake. This is also my own mistake, along with some copper pieces. So we have the motor up on the engine hoist, the pan loose. I might have to drop the subframe. I'm going to check these rods real quick, see if I see anything that merits look pulling out. Also, I'm going to show you a comparison of... Uh, the three oil filters and you know the oil filter that we had when we blew up the motor the first time and spun the rod bearing uh, the oil filter that we had after we changed the first oil and the new rebuilt motor and then this oil filter here that we pulled off we're going to cut them all up show you the differences in all of them and figure out if we need to dig into this thing further or not So all that stuff that looked like dog hair, well, there's a little donut back here, I don't know if you can see it or not, famous words, every YouTuber. Yeah, see it right there, that little foamy deal, apparently it's been catching the bottom plate of this rear main seal casting and it's been peeling itself apart so now I gotta pull it out cut it and pull it out might have put it there by mistake whatever it came with the rear main seal I figured that's where it went I don't know for sure Let me pull this junk out all right this clear one over here that's when I spun the rod bearing in the last rebuild, before the last rebuild, this was the first oil filter I pulled after I rebuilt it, the first oil chain. And this one right here is the one we just pulled out of it. So we're going to look at what these oil filters look like. Now keep in mind I did use a cutoff tool and I cut open these filters out of their units. And if you want to see what that looks like, Basically, just take a cutoff wheel. Or just, you know, nothing pretty, just right on around. Do it on a shirt or something like that. There's a little spring in there that bounces out. 
not really much to it. But yeah, I noticed immediately there was a little bit of metal in the filter and whatnot, and in the wool when I changed it. Initially, I planned on doing this after I rebuilt the motor and gooped up that oil pan gasket in the front main seal. Uh, Stink blowing, it's down blowing and everything over here, just making a fun thing. Everything. Uh, so initially, I pulled this, jacked this motor up, pulled the motor mounts off, and did some of the intercooler piping to replace the oil pan gasket. And when I was there, I remembered I dropped that piece of glove down in there. So I needed to get that out of the pan. I figured, shoot, I better just pull the pan out from underneath the car. Well, I can't pull the pan out from underneath the car right now because there's not enough room on this side to spin it around without dropping the subframe. These two bolts on the subframe over there. And uh, honestly, I'm just kind of too lazy to do all that. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the surfaces off, throw a gasket back on it. I did pull that piece out. I wanted to show you. So I just pulled it where I could get to it and then cut it. My dikes, but yeah, this is all fuzz. I do believe from that. And of course, the glove that I did. But the most concerning thing about it was when I opened it up, I saw some chunks of brass. Some good chunks of brass here. And uh, that's obviously bearing. But it honestly could have been from the last tear up because I really didn't do much to clean the inside of the motor when I threw it all back together. I mean, I cleaned it best I could with brake clean, but you can't get in all the oil valleys where all that stuff is still trapped. So I don't know. Maybe this is a saving grace. Who knows? Hopefully, this wasn't current damage. Of rod bearing, but only time will tell. So this is why we're doing this test. So we first pulled this screen up out of there, and all that stuff was sitting on top of the screen underneath here. So what this does is this just basically goes back in there, and this kind of snaps back on the pickup tube, and this barely kind of floats on it. All right. So we're gonna check out our first filter. Here, the first filter it was blown up. And this is the one that, you know, we blew the car up, so let's slide it a little closer here. Look down there. I'm going to peel it open for you so you can see down in there real good. I mean, just about every rib you'll see some bits of copper and brass or whatever. Like literally every one. Lots of it. Extensive amounts of chunks. Right. I mean, it's just forever. You can see it. It's in the little crevices. Just all, every little pleat there, you can see just a bunch of copper. So that's the one that uh, was blown up. This is the one after we changed the oil. Nothing. That's right after we rebuilt the motor. Some hairs and stuff in it. Shop debris. <laughs> but no bearing deposits. That makes me wonder, well, did we do that damage this time? So here's the filter I just pulled off after the dyno. Uh, and I pulled this filter off to figure out and make an educated opinion on, I guess, on what I need to do next, really. Mm. 
No signs. So let me look in here a little closer and see if I can see anything with pulling these guys back. Okay. The first one I pull back, I see a fleck down here at the bottom. A fleck. Of, there it is right there. See it? That's the first one I pull back. I'll go to the second one. See a bunch of that material again, a bunch of that fuzz down in there. It's even in the filter. A bunch of fuzz. Fuzz. Bunch of fuzz. Bunch of fuzz. Bunch of fuzz. It's basically that fuzz from that seal. So I go all the way around every pleat. And literally, that's the only piece I've seen so far. Oh, there's another one. And then this one's pretty big. It's a pretty sizable one right there. That's the second one I've seen so far. I'm halfway around this filter. And I'm just hoping if I don't see a bunch of that. There's another little tiny one right there. I don't see a bunch of that in here. There's no need for me to pull this motor and, and check these bearings out. Because uh, that's probably just residual. Man, there's a lot of fuzz in this filter. Holy cow. It's like... Mm, it's, it doesn't make me happy. I'm not sure if exactly it was from this or not, but wow. That's a lot of fuzz. A lot of fuzz, man. Looks like we're good. I'm going to go ahead and make the call. And send it again. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put a new full pan gasket on it. Get it sealed up real good from the bottom to the top again because I'm tired of having old drip productions. Yeah. Oh. That's pretty impressive. I mean, only the best of for all the drivers. For all those that came What are you doing? What another are you doing? Another Corolla driver and just got out of the acceleration lane. Oh my gosh. We're slowing down to 40. 40. Oh, that's why it's got that gyroscope. Jupiter. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that is test drive didn't go as planned but there wasn't any rod knock I didn't hear any kind of engine noises but we did feel a power loss and the data log only showed about 22 pounds and then it tapered down to about 19 so we got some issues to iron out still on the car but it's not anything huge to worry about I don't think so if you liked anything you saw here please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button and let me tell you why to hit that bell button so you can see notifications whenever we post new videos. If you don't want to watch them, that's okay. But at least you know we're putting new videos out for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.